Hello everyone. So for this video, we're going to be stepping a little bit into the economics realm of this channel by looking at human behavior on a large scale. Now, for this to work, we have to assume all humans behave in the same way. In economics, it is assumed that humans are rational by acting in their own self-interest. That is, their only goal in life is to maximize their own happiness and nobody else's. I understand this is kind of a broad assumption to make, and there are entire fields based around questioning what human rationality really is. So I'll introduce this guy, Mr. Rationality, to represent the perfect perfect economically rational individual. That way, in any of my videos involving economics, we know that at least Mr. Rationality acts the way economists predict humans will act. Okay, back to the video. Imagine this, you and a few neighbors have a pond in between your houses. The pond has a bunch of fish, which is great because you all love to fish. In fact, you all love to fish so much that whenever you guys go out and fish, you all try to catch as many fish as you can possibly hold in your boats. This is great for a little while, until you begin to notice that you aren't able to catch as many fish as you were able to catch before. The pond is being overfished and it just doesn't have the number of fish that it used to. Since you're Mr. Rationality, you continue your routine because more fish still means more happiness for you and you only really care if you get more fish. Ironically, the more you fish, the more you worsen the situation. Whereas before you were able to catch 10 fish a day, now you're only able to catch 4 and that number keeps going down, which means your happiness is going down as well. This phenomenon is known as the tragedy of the commons and it's when an unowned natural resource, or common, is shared by many individuals. Essentially, this lack of ownership and control leads to a bunch of self-interested individuals depleting a resource because they each try to get the greatest benefit from it while nobody is held accountable economically. That is, there is nothing stopping someone from taking as much as they want to satisfy their own desire. It's the epitome of the phrase, if everybody did that, there'd be nothing left. In order to fix a situation like this, one might look to laws and regulations to change people's incentives. For example, if someone owned the pond and allowed people to fish in it, but required everyone to pay one dollar for every fish they caught, People would fish less since they don't have an unlimited amount of income and can't afford to catch more than a certain number of fish a day. This would ultimately keep the fish in the pond at healthy numbers and lead to more fish for everyone. This keeps everyone happy overall. Now let's look at a more topical example of the tragedy of the commons, pollution. For the most part, people and corporations do not have a vested interest in how much they take away from or put into the environment unless it affects them directly. If I poison the water near my factory and it makes my employees sick, then I'll care since my profits will go down. But if if I pollute the air with carbon emissions and don't see a direct impact on my business, then why would I change my actions? It would be costly to make my factory more green and it doesn't cost me a dime to pollute. This mentality is dangerous as our planet becomes more polluted and climate change starts to take its toll on countries and businesses around the world. You can't run a factory when it's underwater, and wages don't matter when your employees can't breathe clean air. Just like the pond, people will derive less and less happiness from our planet. Since there are few regulations on how much one can pollute, there is no real incentive to change someone's lifestyle or business decisions until it makes financial sense for them to do so. There have been some ideas on how to fix these issues, and one such proposal is to regulate pollution through a carbon tax. The carbon tax's goal is to put a price tag on how much carbon dioxide someone can put in the air. It disincentivizes pollution by making it expensive, just like the fishing fee from our example earlier. Taxes like this have actually already worked in curbing people's behavior. The city of Chicago recently put a tax on plastic bags to lessen consumers' use of them and reduce the bag's impact on the environment. One study found that Chicagoans' use of paper and plastic bags dropped 42% just one month after the rule was instated, and this is only for a small tax of 7 cents a bag. Whereas before Chicagoans had no real direct reason to care about their plastic bag use, imposing a pesky cost on that behavior made the Mr. Rationality inside of all of them go through a lifestyle change. The main point of this video was to show you exactly how the tragedy of the commons can lead to self-inflicted damage when dealing with non-private and unregulated resources, and how a simple change in incentives can create beneficial shifts in large scale human behavior. Environmental regulation is just an important real-life example of this, and one that has and will continue to have real-life consequences in our lifetimes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.